So the next thing I want to talk about is the body mechanics we're going to be using to play the shamisen. So I'm going to explain these by themselves first. So the first mechanic I want to talk about is ad abduction and adduction. This is simply going to be raising our arm, that's abduction, and lowering our arm, which is adduction. Uh, in terms of playing shamisen, we're going to have our elbow bent. It's going to feel a little bit like maybe like flapping a chicken wing or something. And this is going to be the mechanic that we're going to be used to raising or to raise and lower our hand. Uh, raising our arm, our abduction will lower our hand, and lowering our arm will raise our hand. And uh, we want to look for the elbow when we're sort of looking at this particular moment. And I'll talk about that more about that later. So the second mechanic we're going to talk about is uh, pronation and supination. Pronation is when we rotate our forearm such that a palm is facing downward. And supination is when we're rotating our forearm outward such that our palm is facing upward. Uh, we're going to probably going to refer to this as just forearm rotation. Uh, this is going to be really important in playing the shamisen. Um, it's going to be responsible for basically all of our downstrokes. It's going to change the angle of the bocce. And when we are looking for this, we're going to look at the angle of the bocce to see if it's changing. And we're also going to see various degrees of the top of the forearm and the bottom of the forearm as players swing their forearm, or rotate their forearm, I should say. The next thing I want to talk about is wrist flexion. Uh, this is simply bending the wrist such that the palm is facing towards the elbow. I talked about this earlier. Um, we're just going to use this to maintain a 90 degree angle in our wrist and we're basically just going to set it and forget it. Um, we, we're not really uh, bending our wrist anymore on, on this axis. So just remember wrist flexion, 90 degree bend in the wrist, palm facing towards the elbow. So the last mechanic I want to talk about is radial ulnar deviation. Uh, the radius is this bone on sort of the thumb side of the forearm and the ulna is this bone on the uh, pinky side of the forearm and radial ulnar deviation is simply this wrist movement where our hand moves side to side. This one's a lot more subtle in terms of the shamisen because our wrist is bent or flexed to this 90 degree angle. Radial ulnar deviation will look something like this and it's going to be our primary mechanic for just changing the strings. Oshibachi, uh, which you might hear in tunes like Akita ni Katabushi or something like that or maybe the second third parts of Sakura if you've learned from Kyle Abbott. Um, you know, Oshibachi is just going to be essentially just this. And again, it's using to change the strings, or to change which string we're striking. So why is this important? Uh, I think we should understand what body mechanics are happening, just so we have a better understanding of what's going on. Um, you know, a lot of people are given intuitive instructions, like uh, feel like you're trying to strike towards your stomach, or feel like there's a string, you know, pulling your thumb. You know, that kind of thing. And this is all good advice, but it doesn't really tell you how to accomplish this motion. So by understanding what body mechanics are happening, we're going to have a better idea of how to play well. And also, um, these things I told you to look for, you know, look for the elbow when we're raising and lowering our arm. Look for the change in the angle of the bocce when we're rotating our forearm. You know, look for this bend in the wrist and um, look for this subtle mo motion um, where the angle of the bocce will change with regards to the strings. You know, all these things are going to give you tools that you can use to self-diagnose how you're playing. Um, you can watch professional players, top level players, see what they're doing and maybe record yourself or play in front of a mirror. And uh, understanding what you're seeing is going to help you maybe uh, fix what you're doing or maybe just understand what's happening a little bit better. Well, why do you, I guess? That's a really key point, the last. 